What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all keeping well. Now in this video I'm making a zero clearance insert for my table saw. My particular table saw is the Bosch GTS 10X. C. So in this video I'll show you exactly how I do it for this particular table saw and give you guys some reasons for using a zero clearance insert as well. So without further ado let's just crack on and make one. Okay let's start by looking at the existing insert that comes with this Bosch miter saw. Now as you can see it has a quite a large opening so we have a nice big gap either side of the blade and this is the case with nearly all inserts that come with most table saws and the reason for that is to allow you to do bevel cuts so if I just release that blade if I wind it up slightly and just release it off you can see there it's a nice wide opening so that I can bevel that blade over now there is disadvantages to this Namely, your piece that you're working on is not supported all the way into the blade and that can lead to fraying or tear out, especially on things like laminate tops, plywood, even some hardwood when you're trying to be really precise and cut a hardwood joint, you can get some fraying along the edges because your piece is not supported. Another reason for this being so open is the fact that the air is drawn down through this gap. So the dust extraction for this particular miter saw is out the back and it pulls air down through it. So you need a kind of an opening here for that uh, dust extraction. So when I put in my zero clearance insert now, I'm going to lose a bit of that. But I'm, what I'm gaining is more precise uh, cuts. Now another advantage of having a zero clearance insert as well, if you're doing something like cutting narrow thin strips like Kumiko and stuff, as you can see, that strip fits down the side of that blade. So cutting pieces that's the exact curve for the blade can be kind of dangerous. If I'm running a board through that and I'm getting to the end of the cut and that slips down inside in there, well that can get kicked back and get caught up in the blade and it can actually destroy your uh, piece that you're working on or actually cause an injury which is worse again. And it's the same if you're cutting a strip in close to the blade or in close to the fence, the piece is not supported and it can really get stuck down there between the fence. So that's a reason why we might want a zero clearance insert. We can do finer work, less breakout. That's the advantage. So let's make ourselves one of those. Okay, so I'm gonna make my zero clearance insert out of birch ploy. I just happen to have a couple of offcuts in it of it in the workshop, and it's an ideal material to make it out of plywood is nice and stable. Now, just remove this existing insert and we take a measurement of it. It is exactly 10 millimeters. Now, the plywood is 12 mil or half an inch in thickness, so I have to reduce this down. Now, the nice thing about birch ploy is you have a nice solid piece of birch on the outside. There's no gaps in it. It's a high quality plywood, so we can run this through the planer, or you could use a hand plane on it as well to reduce it down that two millimeters. So I'm just gonna run this through my planer now, take it down two millimeters to the exact thickness of this and then we can use this as a template to make a new one. Let's do that. Okay, so there we go, we're nice and thicknessed down, so it's the exact width of my, or the exact thickness of my existing insert. So I'm just gonna use this now as a template, just draw a line around that, and we can cut this down to size. Okay, so I just went to the bandsaw and trimmed off most of the excess. We'll tidy this up with the router now, but just while I'm here, I should point out, here's another place where a zero clearance insert would be very, very handy. So when you're taking narrow strips or cutting pieces like that, pieces can fall down either side of that blade also and get caught up. So if you're not doing larger pieces, if you're doing small little pieces like this, it's always handy maybe to cut into a piece of plywood, clamp it down, and then you have made yourself a zero clearance insert because you don't want little pieces like that falling down there and jamming up 
in the blade and the bearings, which can absolutely happen. So not a place, a zero clearance insert is quite handy. Now, before we continue with the video, 70% of the people watching my channel are not subscribed. So help a ginger haired Irish man out, hit that sub button. Let's continue. Okay, we almost have it to size. So what I'm just gonna do now is f fix this on with a little bit of double sided sticky tape and we can use this then with a guided bit just to cut that back to the exact size we want. Now, my temp or my existing insert is the exact size it needs to be. Sometimes these can be a little bit loose um, on some table saws. Just check yours. You might not want to do this technique. If it is, your existing one is a little bit loose, then if you use a guide bearing or a guided router bit on this, you will make it the exact size, which means your zero clearance insert one will also be a little bit loose. So you could take it down to the size, maybe you could finish it with a hand plane just to get an exact fit. But this is an exact fit, so I can use this technique. So a little bit of double-sided sticky tape. Just like that. Okay, let's get our bearing bit into our router. Happy days. And then we can set our height. Right there should be perfect. Happy days. Now, on the end of this particular insert, there's these two pins, so I'm gonna to have to negotiate them. So I won't get right in close here with the router bit, so Japanese saw rasp or any kind of a rasp or foil, I can just foil this back to shape. So we get most of the work done with this guy now. Let's do that. Okay, I've dropped my saw blade all the way down so I can just check how this is going to fit. So I have a little bit of touching up to do in the back here to get that to fit perfectly. Well, we'll do that with the saw rasp now. That's where those two pins are and I couldn't get the cutter right against it, but not to worry. A little bit of shaping and we'll be good. Okay, so that is a absolutely perfect fit. Now, just take this back out. I have a little notch in the front of it. That's not a mistake. That's there on purpose. It's just so I can get a screwdriver in there and pop that up. So that's exactly how this one works. You can drill a hole in it if you want and put your finger down and pop it up. Put a little notch in the front, screwdriver and happy days. Now, normally if you can drop your saw blade all the way down into your saw, including the riving knife, then you can put this in place, put the fence over, clamp it down and raise your blade through it. I have a particular issue with this saw that I cannot fully remove the riving knife, so I can't put this down flat, it's slightly proud, so I can't hold it in place. So I have to cut a slot in mine first, then I can drop it down and then I can raise my blade through it. So let's do that. So we're gonna put our existing insert back in. I'm gonna line everything up perfectly. Just like so, hold that in place. Bring my fence in against that, just like that, lock that down. And now we can raise the blade and we can cut into this exactly where we need to be. Actually, before we cut our slot, there's another particular quirk with this saw that I have to address before I cut the slot. So I'll just flip this guy back out. You can see there's a raised piece here that fits into a slot in this uh, insert, which means this will not sit flush. So I have to replicate that slot in this now. So let's do that. We're gonna do that with the router. So I'm gonna line everything back up here. Just gonna mark where that slot begins and where it ends. I can see the rough depth of it there. So I'm just gonna gauge exactly where that needs to be. Right there. Like that. Use my pencil and my finger to get a depth gauge on how far in it needs to be, which is right about there. And I can mark that there. So we need to notch that now on my particular saw. You may not need to do this with your saw, depending on how it fits in. But let's take this to the router now and cut that notch out.
Okay, so we're set back up to cut the slot again. Now obviously if I cut the slot first, I would have a little bit of flex in this piece, so it'd be hard to be accurate on the router. So I need to do that first and then cut my slot. So without further ado, let's just do it. Okay, so we're just about done. Now we want to put some adjustment into this. So a couple of screws in the bottom will be fine. A couple of wood screws. So I just want to use this as a template again. So we'll line everything up because these screw holes have to hit a certain point on my particular saw. So we'll just line everything up there. I've pulled the grub screws out of this or the adjustment screws and I can just mark those holes just like that. Now with a countersink bit, I don't want to drill all the way through, so I have the bit pulled right back to the last. I just want to use the countersunk part. Okay, that should be good. Now, I'm going to put some wood screws into this. These ones are a little bit on the long side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start it off in each hole, just like that. Just trim these back to size. Because we don't want these poking through the top. Okay, there we go. So we can use those four screws now to make sure that we're perfectly flush with the top of our table saw. Okay, there we go. All fit nice and flush. We have four adjustment screws. Should we ever need to adjust this just to keep everything nice and flush with our top. Now I've made a couple of these. You can batch these out. You can make one for each blade if you have different thicknesses in curves of your blade and make one for each blade. You can also make one for doing bevel cuts. That one will tend to get chewed up because as you're doing different uh, cuts at different angles, you you will chew it up more but the beauty of having it for bevel cuts as well if, if you're ever in close to your fence doing a bevel cut you guys can't see that now on the existing one if I just grab that you have no support here so if you were cutting I should have had this to hand now but forgive me if you're cutting a raised panel such as this you can see how thin that line is. That can actually slip in there between the blade and the existing insert. So if that's up against the fence and you have that all the way in and you're cutting a bevel, then technically that fine edge has no support. So make one for bevels as well. And it's just a case of raise the blade through it at a bevel. Just take your time, again, clamp it down with your fence and bring it through at the angle that you wanna use it at. But remember, that one is gonna be really a sacrificial piece and you will chew it up doing different angles. So another thing I should point out is this will always be used with a riving knife. So I have a slot cut through my one all the way now so you can see that can potentially pinch the blade, but once the riving knife is in place, it's not an issue. As you can see, this one can also close, but it's nice and wide, so it's not really an issue with the one that comes with it, but you could have a potential of pinching the blade. So never use these like this without a riving knife. If you ever envisage that you will use this without a riving knife for whatever reason, then make a piece to slot in there, because the curve of the blade cut that off, glue it in place, and then that will prevent that from closing. My one is never going to be used without a riving knife, and if, like I said, if I ever have to use it without a riving knife, I would be sure to put a notch in there so it never clamps the blade. 
Okay guys, so there we go, another worthy upgrade to our table saw, something I highly recommend you do, it is really worth doing. So if you're using it for cross cuts, if you're using it with your miter uh, gauge, you can see here just how clean a cut you can get when that piece is supported either side of the blade. Or if you're doing long, narrow rips, you no longer have to worry about that small piece that you're taking off, slipping down between the blade and the insert that came with your saw, which could be quite dangerous and could destroy the piece that you're working on or cause an injury. So it gives you really fine cuts, supports your piece. Highly recommend that you guys make these for your table saw. They're nice and simple, nice and quick. So that's it guys, I'm going to get out of here now. As always, comments and questions below. Hit the thumbs up button, that really helps me out a lot. And if you guys interact with the video, it helps YouTube know that you enjoyed it and the algorithm will share the video with other people. So if you really want to help me out here on my channel, be sure to leave a like and a comment below. Like I said, that helps me out a lot. Now, it's over 30 degrees here in this workshop today. I'm a ginger-haired Irish man, I'm not used to this heat. So I'm going to go out and have a cold drink. I shall see you guys in the next video. Look after yourselves, take it easy.